Hey guys, welcome back to Thinking Caps. This is the podcast that gets marketers thinking. I am excited today because we have Paula Thomas. Paula is a 20 plus year marketing executive and she has tons of experience in the loyalty space. In fact, she was a judge for the Loyalty Magazine Awards. She's the author of Driving Loyalty and Convenience Retail and she's the host founder of Let's Talk Loyalty Podcast, an amazing series with great guests on it. Today we're gonna talk about a lot of different things. She's gonna guide us through COVID related gamification and loyalty emotional loyalty, points, liquidity of loyalty, how people can use different uh, tactics and loyalty points in other different places. She's got great examples. She's got great energy. She's really well established. Let's dig into it. Here's another episode of Thinking Caps. Well, Paula, thank you for coming in and uh, thank you for bringing all your loyalty expertise. I'm eager to dig right in and I'm going to start right off the top. I want to get into something. Today, I feel like the face of loyalty is changing. I mean, we have COVID, we have we have all kinds of digital transformation happening across the globe in all industries everywhere. But there is a specific uh, there's a specific shift, I believe, or growth, I would say, around emotional loyalty versus transactional loyalty. Can you give us your take on that and maybe some examples uh, of of where you're seeing this, you know, resonate? Absolutely, Tim. Thanks. That's a great question. So I think everyone will be familiar with the background of loyalty and the history. It really started, I guess, in the airline industry, where it was really important to get high value customers to travel with you as much as possible. So if you did fly with them consistently and regularly, you got some rewards back and that worked really well. But we would now look at that and say, actually, that's just very transactional. So uh, that's not going to uh, really build a connection with your customer above and beyond the basics because everybody can reward a transaction. So in fact, what we've started to notice that is brands really want to connect with customers in a real way, in a way that creates an emotional connection. And I think I like to just make the simple distinction, Tim, between a loyalty program, which is a structured marketing uh, opportunity, obviously, and the emotion itself of loyalty. So I think we have to start with, first and foremost, let's try and make our customers like us, um, and let's have a loyalty program. Program, but let's see what else we can do. So in fact, my favorite example of that recently was with McDonald's. They did a phenomenal campaign just over three days in the United States, and it was called Pay It Forward, where they released a load of cards, gift cards into the market, preloaded with essentially free coffees. And you had the opportunity to obviously have your own free coffee in any McDonald's store and then pay it forward to somebody else. So I think it's really interesting that a massive brand like McDonald's is just going, do you know what? We need to connect with our customers and do something, I suppose, beyond points or prizes and do something that makes them really feel good. Wow, Richard, did you get your free McDonald's? I didn't. Uh, wow. I, I, I didn't. I'm how did we miss that one? <laughs> you, know, you know, I do, talk, I do like to get every freebie under the planet. Of course, so. why not? <laughs> no, so that's a, that's a, yeah. I mean, it's a great, a great example. But I know one of the things that you... Um, I believe in you talk about is that brand trust is is more important than than any loyalty program so tell us a little bit that how marketers should be thinking about that Yes, and this one came out of some research that I was actually interviewing myself, somebody about from KPMG, who we'll all know, very well-respected uh, management consulting firm. And they released a report just in November 2019, so pretty new information. And it was called The Truth About Customer Loyalty, and it was global. So I always love to have a global perspective. Um, about 18,000 consumers around the world were interviewed. And really, I'm just going to directly quote this to you, they concluded that in almost every country, points and rewards were less likely to earn loyalty than corporate transparency and honesty. And again, this was pre-COVID, before we all had those massive issues going on. And already people were kind of going, well, who am I doing business with? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. I mean, we talk a lot about brand trust, right, through the privacy and, and explicit opt-in and not snooping, et cetera, third party. So it's interesting to to look at it from a loyalty perspective. Well, I mean, you can, one can un understand that because we, you know, from our own research that we did with e-consultancy, you can see a, yeah. a shift that consumers yeah. want brands to, to stand for something. You know, they want them to uh, be more than yeah. just a transactional relationship and that they, you know, they want to feel they can have trust in those brands in terms of the way they handle their data and the way they treat them and, you know, what they stand up for in the world. So, I mean, it, for me, it all, it all correlates. 
Yeah. So, Paula, and that report, is that available on your website? Can our viewers get that report to, to read more? Totally, Tim. Yeah, what I'll cool. do is I'll make sure to send you a link yeah. directly to that because I well, think everybody needs all of the latest information. So definitely make sure you have links to that. Great. We'll have that up on the screen right now. Cool. So I want to move forward. You're um, you're a founding member of the Customer Strategy Network. Uh, you've been you know in this space for 20 years, a decade of just pure loyalty consulting for large global yeah. brands. Um, yeah. I want to talk a little bit about like your excellent standard for loyalty. When you start to get a new, you know, mm -hmm. new client or an existing client, yeah. what do you really, you know, what do you look for as the ingredients to an awesome, excellent loyalty program? What are your foundational building blocks? Well, thank you, Tim. It's a great question. And I love that you mentioned actually the customer strategy network, because I think one of the things we love to do is basically um, really um, excel in terms of the operational side of making sure loyalty programs are working. Um, and I think there's lots of amazing advice and information out there. But actually, practitioners are, I think, the people who've been through all these loyalty programs and they know what kind of comes through. So to your point, um, I've done a lot of writing, a lot of reading, a lot of podcasts casting actually like you guys and I suppose in my own mind I really needed to have some principles to understand what is it that I'm looking for when I'm building a program or evaluating it so at its simple level um, the first three principles all begin with the letter C because I like things to be simple <laughs> and consistent <laughs> so first of all it's got to be clear um, at the end of the day if your customers are confused then absolutely you're, you're, you're fighting a losing battle the second thing is for me consistent because I think there are plenty of people who do like to learn how the loyalty program is working. So they need something they can rely on. So a consistent value proposition is extremely important. Now, obviously, you can add loads of things in, you can ramp it up, you can do loads of promotions. But at the end of the day, you have to have something that's, I suppose, always on. And the third thing I think as a foundational principle is compelling. So at the end of the day, if I have to wait a couple of years before I get any rewards back, um, there's definitely, it's again, a losing battle. So it has to be something the customer goes, okay, maybe it's instant gratification or something like that, but definitely something the customer understands and it is compelling to them. And then I suppose there's a higher level um, that I developed, again, just from looking at all of these programs over, as you said, a decade just working on loyalty. And the, I think, really important one is easy. And I think there's a lot of people yeah. Yeah. totally overwhelmed. Yeah, I'm sure you guys see this in all of your work. Um, so unless I really get it, um, definitely easy is, is the simplest um, facility to, to, to get to excellence. And then engaging, obviously, there's plenty of ways that you can build loyalty programs, but it has to really, you know, have that element where the customer enjoys it. And then I also love this principle, which is empowering. And this actually probably connects back again to the point about emotional loyalty. So I see more programs that are literally going, actually, do you know what, let me gift a coffee to a friend or, you know, do something for my family. So if you can empower somebody to do something wonderful, then I think they really appreciate it. That makes total sense. Uh, easy. I like the easy. It's got to be easy, right? And we just won uh, an award with Vans in conjunction with Vans at the Loyalty Magazine Awards, which ironically, Paula has yes, a history with did. as a judge. Right. Um, and it's easy. I love that. Yeah. The Vans app is so easy. My, my kids, my wife, everybody can get on it. Uh, it's, yeah. it's awesome. No, I'd, I'd say the, yeah. you know, all of that is like 100%. Completely yeah. agree with the, 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 the other piece that we, we do see coming through loud and clear when we're working with, with customers yeah. around their loyalty programs is, is also um, agility. So, oh, yeah. you know, w when you're yes. running a loyalty yeah. program, if you can't really understand how people are interacting with it, with the, the data framework that you need to really kind of make sense of what's yeah. happening with your loyalty framework, and then the ability to then yeah. adjust to that data, you can't do things, for yeah. example, like saying, oh, well, maybe yeah. the tiering of the, the point, you know, the rewards yep. between one tier and the other yeah. was too much. And actually, it's a disincentive. Now, we've, yes. we've seen the data. We can learn from it. We can change our tiering. So yeah. agility, I think, is something that we're hearing loud yes. and clear as well. Fair. Fair, fair, it's a fair. great point, Richard. Yeah, I love it. And and I'll actually add one more, which you've reminded me of, Richard. And, you know, there's this principle, I think, about, um, you know, capturing a load of data, but maybe not using it. 
And I said to somebody recently, like my birthday now, I'm suddenly analyzing lots of, you know, all of the programs, the loyalty programs I've joined to basically go, are they using my data? I've told them it's my birthday. So um, <laughs> you need to be an ad. <laughs> Seriously, I'm judging everyone. So <laughs> it's important to use the data if you're going to ask for it. That's, that's true. Yeah, don't. I mean, if you're going to ask, you better <laughs> listen and you better use it. I've, yeah. I've told you yeah. when my birthday is, and I've told you I love presents. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. How hard can it be? I need free coffee and chocolate. <laughs> there you go. No, so, um, yeah. Uh, all very, very good stuff. So, th another thing that we wanted to um, just uh, ask you about was this whole kind of trend that I know that you've been seeing around the, the points for good, yeah. you know, digital dieting, charity yeah. donations, et cetera. Tell us a little bit that, yeah. uh, about that, what you're seeing, and, and what marketers should yeah. think about. Yeah, um, a great, again, it's a lovely framework for me to, to think beyond, you know, just being in the interests of the business, you know, so the commercial background of loyalty programs. I think there is um, a really lovely trend for programs to go, well, genuinely, how can we be loyal back to our customers? We're asking them to be loyal to us. So what does that value exchange look like? And I think, again, brands have known this and they've done maybe big charity donations, maybe to one or two partners over the years. But I think increasingly we're understanding that people want to do something maybe for a charity that means something to them personally. So we've seen lots of charities in the UK, for example, where there's a platform and you could donate to any one of 20,000 charities. But it might be like my local, you know, donkey sanctuary, for example, or something that is, you know, a nationally recognized. But again, I think the, the whole thing is it's points for good. It's I might not have enough points to get a free flight or something significant, but let me do something with that. So I really feel that, again, it closes the loop of the loyalty program where I'm getting to enjoy behaving in a certain way and I feel I'm doing something else for um, another organization. And I know I mentioned actually before we came on air as well about um, this digital dieting concept because it's something I'm definitely guilty of. I don't know about you guys, but I'm totally addicted to my phone. <laughs> <laughs> So, I don't know what you mean. You know, what do you mean? Uh, <laughs> well, well, Paula, I would I would say that um, you know I, I'm going to be doing a lot of digital dieting recent uh, and from now because Trump's just banned TikTok. Yeah. Uh, oh, I don't know. Yeah, oh, so what, am, what, are, what am I going to do with my news. days? I don't I don't know if you know <laughs> wow. this, Paula, but you're actually speaking with a TikTok star. Star. He has hundreds wow. of thousands of views on TikTok, and it's quite impressive. <laughs> That's true. Wow. That's true. Okay, That's Richard. actually true. Yeah, gonna... but there is there's okay. no talent in it whatsoever. <laughs> he I, just uh, happened to be in the right okay. place at the right time yeah, with the right I, subject matter. I, uh, I, was, I was at one of these yes. monster trucks. And you have an uh, audience. Yeah. <laughs> I, I went to a monster truck uh, show and I just I just oh. thought, oh, I'll just I'll just film it and stick it on TikTok. No, no talent. Yeah. Nothing at all. <laughs> and it ended up having half a million views. Oh, so. That's great. <laughs> I mean, that'll show you oh like TikTok. You don't have to. Yeah. Oh. You, don't, you don't need talent to be a star. Oh, oh man. Well, that's yes. Incredible. Digital dieting is in your future. Okay. It's 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 uh, highly recommended. It's going to happen. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. Paula, we talked a little bit um, before we started taping about an idea that I want you to kind of explain as well, because this is really uh, this is really interesting to me. The, the liquidity of your loyalty mm. points or standing with a particular mm. brand and how, you know, maybe you're not yeah. just using the points for for uh, interaction with that brand. And, and we have a client, the selling group, which brings all their grocers and other, um, you know, retail operations yeah. all under one uh, roof, so to speak. Mm. So if you're buying at, at retailer yeah. A, you could reward at retailer B, et cetera, because they're in the same group. But Talk to me a little bit about yeah. the examples you're seeing of liquidity, of how your your loyalty and your behavior can be rewarded in many different yeah. ways. Yeah. Um, again, I think it's coming from customers looking for more from loyalty programs and from brands. So, for example, I'm Irish. Uh, I don't know if the accent's coming through, but <laughs> my favorite supermarket. Can you hear it? Am I, am I oh, sounding Irish? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Richard's wife is okay, also uh, Irish. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Oh, yeah. lovely. 
Okay. So, uh, so Richard's wife might know my favorite supermarket called Super Value um, in Ireland. And like, actually, it's certainly not unusual, but, you know, they ran a loyalty program with grocery points for years. But eventually, when Aer Lingus um, redeveloped their loyalty program, they set up a partnership. So travel is always hugely aspirational. And if I can get even a contribution towards my next flight by shopping in a certain grocery store, that's amazing. So that's the simple definition of liquidity. Uh, but I think the example that I'm, I'm really most impressed by comes from Japan. And there's a huge loyalty program there from a company called Rakuten, um, which is essentially the Amazon of Japan. And I believe they've awarded, I don't know, several trillion loyalty points now over the years. But the key point that I love about their program is you can use those Rakuten rewards points in 600,000 merchants throughout Japan. So for anyone who's, you know, deciding is this program worth joining, which again, we know all consumers are going to do before they put in the data. And there's a great example. You can use it in 600,000 stores. Of course, you're going to join. It's, it's an, it is that Rakatana are amaz amazing yeah. company. I mean, what they've done with their loyalty program is, is, is almost like a it's entire closed loop yeah. economy for, for Japan. Totally. Yeah. It's incredible. They own the yeah. world. They really do. Yeah, extraordinary yeah. company. <laughs> they, they, sorry, Tim, you going to say something? No, I, I, well, I was going to say something, but I'm not because I'm going to give you the floor. All right, let me, let me, t let me take it. So, uh, another the thing that, that we we're very interested in getting your opinion on is the rise of paid loyalty programs and what you're seeing there. Yeah. Yeah, this is probably the biggest surprise, Richard, I would have to say, because we all know about subscribing to Netflix and subscribing to Amazon Prime, you know, as a business model. But um, I think Panera Bread in the US actually is probably just astounding everybody with what they've done just in the last six months. So they launched a program. They already have like 40 million members in their loyalty program. So it's already astonishing. It's, it's double the size of Starbucks rewards. But just six months ago, they launched a paid subscription program uh, within that where you can get basically unlimited coffee for $9 a month. Now, I thought that was extraordinary because coffee is, is a high margin product and very few brands want to give it away. But they have published some incredible results about the upsell and the cross sell and the goodwill and just the overall lifetime value that they're driving with this paid program. So I think for anyone watching the show or listening, um, that's one extraordinary example of people who are prepared to pay for loyalty. I've seen it in China as well with Alibaba. They have a program called 88, which is free to join. It's a points-based program. But a year after they launched, they added a paid tier. So you could literally pay to get amazing discounts with them, the Alibaba marketplace. And the final example I'll give you is Coca-Cola. So they have done some uh, very interesting work. And it's literally called the Insiders Club, where you pay like $10 a month and you get access to Coca-Cola new flavors and new samples. So you're paying to sample their product. So if that is an extraordinary loyalty, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what is. Yeah, I mean, if you can <laughs> figure out how to get people to pay to just like test, you know, yeah. things and taste things, you're crushing it. <laughs> well done, Coca-Cola, totally. yet again. I, I wonder totally. if Jeremy... They don't, you don't had, even know what you're getting. <laughs> yeah, right? We had, we had uh, Jeremy Schwartz, who was the... Um, the inventor of uh, Coke Zero on yep. the uh, on the show a couple of weeks ago, I, went, wow. I wonder if he used any kind of loyalty program insights yeah. in the making mm. of Coke Zero. Was that before before then? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's interesting. Uh, Again, we talk about the data that you have, right? From loyalty programs, from commerce, from your partners, your retail partners. Like when you start to bring all that together, you can really craft an interesting loyalty program. Um, I have another question for you though, uh, because of the rise of COVID. You mentioned Panera and and. You know, they're, they're mm -hmm. able to shift in yeah. real time to get people to this in a loss leader program of like, hey, give away the coffee, yeah. you know, and cross sell up, sell yeah. to the things that we really want to want to sell. Um, but how about gamification? COVID hit. And, you know, frankly, mm -hmm. I love United Mileage Plus. I have United Mileage Plus Chase card. Mm -hmm. I use it everywhere. Mm -hmm. The liquidity of points are great. Yeah. I can cash them in for Home Depot, you know, yeah. gift cards and things like that. Yeah. But um, I'm not really interacting with them. I'm flying. Very, well, I'm actually flying, but not as yeah. much as I used to. How can I totally. interact with brands and how are brands and loyalty programs using gamification in this kind of COVID, mm. post-COVID era to, to yeah. keep that emotional loyalty up? 
Yeah, I think um, gamification came about, I suppose, when, you know, loyalty program operators realized how addicted gamers were, you know, to, to literally just, you know, spending that incredible amount of time uh, within their products. So obviously there's a whole industry built up within loyalty and it goes back again, I'm sure at least a decade, certainly as long as I've been around, but it has probably been purely existing within a very low margin businesses, say um, fuel retail. Um, so again, back to Ireland where I have so much experience, um, there really was a very little opportunity to give a rich reward back because you know the, the margins just aren't there. So gamification was always a really fun way to engage people and when they were refueling. But I suppose I've just been noticing in the last three or four months, again, I suppose the, um, the budgets aren't really available to do the promotional points, for example, that many retailers would be normally using. So if you can't invest and people aren't behaving in that way anyway, how do you engage and how do you connect? So actually gamification is the ultimate example where, you know, you can give people an opportunity to spin the wheel, to win um, anything from stamps, again, back to free coffee. Chocolate is my favorite. And you can use it in any sector. And I think if what it does for anyone who's interested in loyalty programs is you really just need to get an understanding of human psychology. There's a couple of books I can recommend for your listeners as well. And um, mm. just talking about the principles of like, what do we want to do? You know, what, what's the person feeling that, uh, that a game can connect them and make them maybe feel part of a community or just like they're having fun with your brand? Ooh. We like those book recommendations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, do you have any books <laughs> off the top of the head that you really like? Yes, absolutely. There's a guy who um, actually lectures in Stanford University. His name is Yu Kai Cho, and he has a framework. Uh, this is a big one now called the Octalysis Framework. And um, the book is Gamification. I can't remember the full title, Tim. You'll oh, have to forgive right. me. We'll, go but we'll Google it. We probably have it on the screen it. right now. Yeah. There you go. Yu Kai Cho. Yeah, he's he's a genius. So if you can have a look at that one, that's a great understanding of the psychology of gamification. Cool. Sweet. Well, look, we're, we're over 20 minutes in with Paula. Um, Richard, do you have any closing thoughts? Do you have anything? Yeah, last just, for just, uh, yeah. just last uh, last question. Um, uh, it'd be interesting to get your thoughts on, uh, which is, you know, obviously with with COVID-19 and with the very, um, you know, tough situation that's come to to the economy uh because of the lockdown mm. and the restrictions and stuff um we're, we're you know we're in a deep recessionary uh, period and and you know going back mm. and looking at other recessionary periods um in the past um, yeah. what we see is we see a big increase in the amount of uh mm. use of promotions and discounts and offers mm. and that type of stuff to mm. try and incentivize mm. uh people to uh, to spend when we did mm. our e-consultancy um, research recently, we uh, saw that uh, nearly nine times as many consumers uh, want to mm. participate in more loyalty programs in 2020 mm. than those that actually want mm. to reduce their participation. So, you know, we mm. can sort of see there's this this rise in, in, in wanting to participate in loyalty. Yeah. We know that promotions and uh, that type of stuff yeah. are important yeah. in an accessory environment. I just wanted to ask you, yeah. what are your thoughts in terms of the importance of loyalty yeah. programs for helping brands and marketers navigate this period and hopefully accelerate uh, the recovery. I love that, Richard. Um, everything I'm hearing and everything I'm seeing is that there is an absolute, um, just, I suppose, fundamental need for, first of all, the understanding of who your top customers are. So from a company's perspective, loyalty programs are top and center, I believe, on much more board level conversations than they have been in the past. And I think what this um, pandemic has done for people is realize, you know, really what's important. And I think we've all um, had to reevaluate what we do, how we do it, how we spend our time and what brands that we do connect with. So I definitely want to have a two way mutually beneficial relationship with the brands that I feel that value me. And I think that fundamentally bodes well for loyalty programs and uh, bodes uh, poorly for those who are I suppose, overly focused just on promotional mechanics and discounts, because I don't think that's ultimately going to drive anyone and, and no value will be exchanged. 
Makes total sense. Complete sense. Yeah. Total sense. Totally, totally agree. Totally agree. Total sense. Well, Paula, this has been uh, this has been great. I'm really glad that we had you on. We could talk for days with loyalty for you. But uh, the good news is for our viewers and our listeners, you have your own po- podcast called uh, Let's Talk Loyalty. It's well established, even more yeah. well established than ours. It's everything loyalty. Uh, you're also an author. We're going to have your book up here, and uh, Let's Talk Loyalty.com is where people can find out uh, what you're up to, your papers, all of the reports, the things you're working on. Anything else that our viewers should know about you and how they can engage with you and and, uh, you know, the organizations that you're working with? Uh, I'm just delighted to be to be talking to you guys. I know Cheetah is doing amazing work, and I know you won so many awards. And I think actually what I'm most impressed with you guys is that you're also leveraging the power of podcasting. I think my, my favorite subject at the moment is literally this, the power of the human voice to create a connection. And that's both for consumers and for people in business. So well done you. And uh, yeah, Thank let's you. just keep going. Oh, Thank you. Yeah, the, 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 we don't have your Irish lilt, though, to, uh, <laughs> to make that connection. That's the, yeah, and, and we just cover our heads with hats and, and anchor down. And by the way, yeah, uh, your hat. Tell us about your hat. What, what hat are you wearing today? Thanks for wearing a hat. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, I don't have any other cap in my possession except <laughs> this one. So, but I, I, it means a lot to me personally. Um, I recently got engaged and oh, my fiance's, thank you very much. My fiance's son uh, decided to launch a range of merchandise at one point and uh, he gave me one of his caps. So, oh, wow. uh, so it's a, yeah, he gave it to me and I, I love it. It's the only one I've got. Very cool. It's it's similar. I'm not saying it's the same, but it's similar to one of my favorite brands I've been involved with for well over a decade, almost 20 years, Electric California. It's a sunglass eyewear company, and uh, it's very similar. Okay. I, I like it a lot. So uh, good luck to him with his with his new merchandise. It's, it's all about the merch. Yeah, it's all about the merch. <laughs> yeah. Paul, it's been great. This has been another episode of Think Cast, people. You can check us out on Apple iTunes. If you're watching this at cheetahdigital.com, um, find us and go look at all of our library of other content. Richard, great to see you again. Thank you, sir.